what do you say after that? No. <laughs> um, this is a national campaign, and we are very, very fortunate to have a former presidential candidate here. Those of us in South Dakota don't know too much about her because she wasn't on our ballot. She's from the Green Party. The Green Party has a lot of positions in Germany. The Green Party needs to have more positions now in the United States. So I'd like to introduce uh, Jill Stein. She was a presidential candidate in the last election from the Green Party, and she is also um, doing something. Today is the first day of a global climate convergence. So it's not just national, it's global. So Jean, or Jill, would you come up here? Thank you so much, Charmaine. Thank you to the Black Hill Defenders. Thank you to the Ogallala Sioux, who've been so courageous in standing up for what we need for indigenous people, for all people. Um, thank you to you all, really, for being here. It's an honor to be here where these battles are really being fought. And I agree with the reverend who opened that this is a fight. It, it needs to be a peaceful fight, but it's not going to be um, easy. Um, but it is going to happen. And I want to actually clarify that I'm here today speaking uh, not as a former presidential candidate, uh, but really as a as a spokesperson for this effort that Charmaine mentioned, this global climate convergence. And the full name is For People, Planet, and Peace Over Profit. And the idea is it's time to get together. <coughs> And that when we do get together, we really are unstoppable. And that we're always being told by the very powerful uh, predators out there who own the media and many of our institutions that we are the fringe, you know, that we are the fringe who want to stand up for clean air, clean water, a climate that actually supports life and, and healthy economies, who are standing up for jobs for living wages, uh, for health care as a human right, for downsizing our military and having a defense department which is truly defense and not offense. All these things actually come together and they work really well. And in many ways, this is a great jumping off point for them right here. Right here in South Dakota and in the states of the West, cleaning up these 10,000 uranium mines. And we need to not only clean them up, we need to stop future mining as well. There is no safe way to mine uranium. And it's really important, I think, to realize that we're actually coming from a position of incredible strength. Strength of our values. These are community values. These are family values. Uh, these are tribal values. Um, strengthen our values and strengthen our numbers because polls actually show over and over that when people have a chance to hear what the pollution is, what the effects of radiation and uranium are, uh, these wars for oil and scarce resources that we really don't need, we can just create uh, a decentralized uh, green renewable energy economy right here at home and then those wars for oil all go away that money comes back into our economy. We don't need that uranium either for the nuclear power plants or for the nuclear weapons because we can have a peaceful world and we can have a world which is self-sufficient using clean renewable energy. And in fact, we can put everybody back to work at living wage jobs so that people are not forced to go to the mines because they have no other source of work. So the minute we get together and make a big agenda, all these problems solve themselves. And I want to just tell you one other really good piece of news. There are studies now, in particular coming out of Stanford University, these are highly respected studies, that show we can actually pay the costs of shutting down these dirty mines, transitioning to clean renewable energy, putting everybody back to work. That all gets paid for by one thing, and there are many there are many areas of savings from doing this but one amazing area of savings is that we don't have all this pollution anymore making people sick and the savings from pollution sicknesses that are prevented alone is more than enough 
to make this clean, green energy transition and get us off the need for uranium mines and dirty fossil fuels for good. So there's good news out there. It's all about our standing up together. And what we're doing here today, getting together to demand that the mines be cleaned up, is a really important beginning from which we can go on to bigger things. But this is a really critical place to start. It's a place of incredible agreement because the health effects are so clear. There is no secret going on here. It is well established that uranium is extremely dangerous. Uh, the workers who went into the mines have a 400 percent elevated risk of getting lung cancer alone and at much younger ages. We know also that the closer you live to a mine, the greater the risks are for cancer, for high blood pressure, for birth defects, for rheumatoid arthritis, for all kinds of diseases. And by the way, my background originally is as a medical doctor. Uh, I just call this political medicine that I'm practicing now because it's the mother of all illnesses. Um, but yes, there are, there are clear-cut health effects. Uh, there's no question about it. That case that Margaret mentioned is also very powerful ammunition for us to use because what the court said in this case wh that was decided uh, about a week ago, uh, this was in federal court and this was the case um, against, I'm sorry, this was the Tromox settlement, which involves the Riley Pass mine, but that's the only mine here in, in South Dakota that gets a settlement out of it. So that leaves lots more mines that need to be remediated. But what they decided in that settlement is that there's no question about it. This is dirty, toxic stuff that the mines have left a horrific, unconscionable legacy and it must be cleaned up. That's what the courts said to one particular corporation responsible for much of the pollution. So what we're saying now in Clean Up the Mines is that that has set a new public health standard and it's really incumbent on our elected officials in Congress to uphold that public health standard and we're asking them to do that by appropriating whatever funds are necessary to clean up those mines and prevent prevent these health disasters which are occurring among us right now. But they're not going away because radiation, you know, it will be there for millions of years. So it doesn't get better over time, it just gets worse. So it's time to clean them up. Let's prevent the enormous costs that lie ahead of us by investing the small amount that it takes to actually clean up these mines right now. So back to you, Charmaine, and thank you so much, all of you, for making this happen.